Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're watching. Welcome to another edition of Crime Time with Duty Ron and Ed Wallace. If you like all things true crime related from the police detective's perspective, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you'll get all things Duty Ron and Ed Wallace when we go live or upload another video. Hey, today I want to talk to you about the preview for tonight's show, Stephen Smith, his autopsy, the um, re-examination of his remains. What will that show? We're going to have a forensic pathologist. We had, if you remember, in our previous live stream, uh, Dr. Murray Marks. He is a forensic anthropologist. And the team, Eric Bland and Ronnie Richter, lawyers for Sandy Smith, they have announced that they have assembled a forensic team, including pathologists and anthropologists, as we spoke on 10 days ago. So before I get into it, I want to just say thank you to the Patreon supporters, the channel members, all the folks who positively engage in this community, your replay viewers, the mods, uh, folks who leave comments, so those of you who share these videos onto your social media, those of you who send questions onto dutyron.com, uh, we thank you. And without your engagement, without your interaction, it really doesn't make uh, much for a conversation. So I say thank you to all of you. Um, and Shelly is checking in from Germany. Dawn Marie's here. Miss Donna Marie, um, Jojo, Kevin, uh, Marie, uh, Mary, thank you so much for everyone being here. And listen, um, by a show of hands, who has been following this case closely? Uh, Stephen Smith, um, 19 years young, uh, murdered now. This is a murder investigation, uh, July 8th of 2015. In the middle of the road found um, by a passerby, a, a, a gentleman in his vehicle called 4 a.m. Hey, there's somebody in the middle of the road. Uh, just by a show of hands here, press a one in the chat. If you've been following this case because of Alec Murdoch, convict Murdoch, they opened the investigation in 2021. It was classified as a hit and run. And in 2021, as they were investigating uh, convict Murdoch for the murders of his wife and his son. Uh, Sled reopened the investigation. Um, it, it, this, I think, has got everybody across the world curious of what the hell happened, what went wrong, what happened with the initial response from the local PD, the highway, and the sled. You know, um, it, it, it's it's a real confusing case and. You know, Ed Wallace and I, we are experts in our various fields in investigations. Ed, as you know, is a crime scene investigator, retired from the New York City Police Department. He's investigated over 2,500 crime scenes. He's an expert uh, court uh, witness. To, he can give testimony for the defense and the prosecution. Um, we look to all of the trades like dr murray marks barbara butcher from the new york city medical medical examiner's office we look to the trades legal medical death investigators anthropologists um, forensic pathologists and tonight we're gonna lean on a forensic pathologist who happens to live in the south carolina in the state of south carolina and he is um, a returning uh, guest Dr. Eric Eason, not Easton, it's E-A-S-O-N. Dr. Eric Eason is a forensic pathologist. I asked Dr. Eason to, over uh, over a course of time, to look at uh, Stephen Smith's autopsy from back in 2015. And, and, you know, right away he said, Ron, send me the reports. Let me look at these reports, and I'll give you my thoughts on those reports. Uh, again, he's going to join us at 8 p.m. tonight, and we're going to discuss. And, and and again, if you if you suffer from PTSD or any type of um, sensitive information like what we're going to discuss tonight, I, I I would give that um, trigger warning. Uh, I'm going to give it tonight. I'm going to give it during the course of before we go into the conversation. I, I don't think I'm going to show the crime scene photos out of respect, even though they are out there. You know, um, I think, you know, I've seen th those crime scene photos of Stephen Smith. I, I shared them with our forensic pathologist who's going to join us tonight. Um, 
it, Barbara Butcher and Dr. Murray Marks. I shared them with him and, and her. Um, but I, I, I don't think that it, it, we need to show that. Um, but we're going to discuss it. Um, so, so that's the thing. Uh, we're going to get into so many different aspects of this case. Uh, we saw a picture that was posted on social media of Stephen Smith's grave. It looked like his tombstone was taken out and his body was exhumed already. But we have no uh, 100% confirmation that his remains were exhumed. But if they were, um, they would be transported to probably New York. Uh, I think I heard a report about that. Um, but until I get 100% confirmation, of course, uh, I, I hope that the body was exhumed on Friday. Um, but I, I don't know definitively if it was. But it, there was a photo I saw on Twitter. But I want you guys to listen to um, a conversation with the South Carolina Attorney General. Um, he gets... This, uh, he he invites a reporter into his office, the Attorney General for South Carolina, and this reporter is a young reporter, and 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 kudos to him. He really pushed him at about one minute and forty four seconds in this video, um, and he pushed him against the wall. He kind of, you know, he didn't physically push him, but he put his back up against the wall and asked him the question about what happened in the Stephen Smith investigation. And why wasn't the attorney general stepping in over the course of time? Um, so let me let me go um, let me go in and and take a peek at this. Um, a lot of people in the chat are saying here. Here's Ava Hawkshore, a family friend and advocate for Stephen Smith, says he has been exhumed. That's great. I'm I'm hoping that that is the case. But again, like I said, I'm not a person to go and speak on something until I get 100% confirmation on it. So I'm hoping that they did. The sooner, the better. Uh, so just, you know, again, everybody in the chat, no need to have any arguments about it. Um, I saw the picture of his tombstone outside of the grave and pushed to the side, just like any um, cemetery would do if they were exhuming a body. I've seen it many, many times. They take the headstone and they move it nice and they put it, you know, so that's, I saw that. Um, but again, you know, we're going to, we're going to yield on that. And, and, and really that's not what this live is about. Let them do their work. Let the forensic anthropologists and the forensic pathologists do their jobs. Uh, here's the attorney general. Let's take a listen to what this reporter says to him. Yeah. Another case too, that's getting a lot of attention connected to Alec Murdoch. His name kept coming up in this investigation, the death of Stephen Smith back in 2015, found on the side of the road. Are you going to be involved in that investigation? Because SLED has confirmed they have reopened the case based on new evidence that was discovered in connection to the murders of Maggie and Paul. What I can tell people is this office will always pursue the, pursue the, tr uh, the truth of any case that is open and in being investigated. And whatever evidence is determined from that investigation, it will be assessed and va evaluated and we will pursue it if we at all possibly can. I'm obviously not gonna comment on a pending case, but what I can tell people is, is that if we have the ability to prove a crime beyond a reasonable doubt to a jury of peers, then we're going to pursue that in a court of law. If we don't have the ability to you know, prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. We'll continue to investigate or work with law enforcement until it can be determined that we can or can't ever prove it. So that's really all I can say about a pending case. Can you elaborate on any evidence at all that was discovered? Okay. Stephen Smith's family has released a statement saying that they are, are putting so much trust in your office. What kind of way to, uh, is that for a family to say, you know, we see that justice was served for Maggie and Paul, and we hope the same can be done for Stephen? Like everyone else, I've seen some of these shows, the documentaries on this, and obviously I'm familiar with what happened because we've, you know, obviously looked at it legally. Um, I have nothing but compassion for that family, Stephen's family, and um, it's horrible what happened to that young man. Um, and so they, they obviously, from the bottom of my heart, for him to say it's horrible what happened to that young man, we could all like kind of lead into like, well, what do you mean? Uh, is is he saying it's horrible that he was murdered? Is he saying that it was horrible that he was a victim of an accident, which was the case for so many years until 2021 when they started investigating convict Murdoch? So I, I, when I first listened to this, it, it, it angered me. 
And at the same time, it made me just shake my head and say, things that make you go, hmm, you know, when it comes, this is the attorney general, the highest law enforcement official in the state of South Carolina. And if you listen to this conversation, if you listen closely to it, you hear how careful he is with his words. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. I have nothing but compassion for them. What I can say as a prosecutor is that we will work with law enforcement to evaluate the evidence and to pursue it as far as it will take us. And if we can prove something beyond a reasonable doubt, we will bring it up in a court of law. I don't want to mismanage expectations. I don't want to make an assertion here today that this will happen or that that will happen because I don't think that's fair to people to get their hopes up. All I, all I can tell them is we will never stop looking as long as there's evidence to be seen, heard, or found. Are you able to confirm or anything? Is there an open investigation, Buster Murdoch? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to comment on anything that possibly could be pending or not pending. And I'm not going to say that there is. Uh, I, I just don't want to feed the rumor mill. Um, you know, like I said, everybody wants to see us go down rabbit holes. You know, we're going to work with law, our law enforcement partners and we're going to evaluate information and evidence as it, as it comes to light through those investigations and we'll act appropriately in accordance with that. The Murdoch family had been in power for a long time. How far back will these investigations go? Um, again, I, I can't answer an unknown like that. Um, I will remind people this. Um, this he should have said, we'll go back as far as we need to. I, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick this whole thing apart, but um, <clears throat> I didn't leave this interview with a whole lot of confidence in the state of Cal uh, South Carolina and the attorney general. Um, but again, this reporter is who I really want to point out here is kudos to this young reporter for asking these hard questions. And um, he had brass balls with this guy. Like he is in his office. You could see he's clearly in the attorney general's office. Uh, and, and, and this kid, this, this young man, I call him a kid cause I'm, now 58 but he he really he, he went at him and i think that was awesome uh the way he cornered him from one minute and 44 seconds up until now at 609 this family is also a victim you know everyone wants i, I can't answer an unknown like that um how far back will these investigations go um again i, I can't answer an unknown like that um i will remind people this this family is also a victim. You know, everyone wants to say because they're of their last name that, you know, they were involved, but there are a lot of people in this family other than just Alec and Buster and some of these others you've heard about. Um, and I have compassion for any victim of any crime. And, uh, you know, this is a very sensational case. Um, it's called, it's captured the imagination of the world of the nation. Certainly the you know, I agree and disagree with them. Yes, the Murdoch family is a victim, like anyone that's innocent within that family, right? And and who are we? I don't know who's innocent and who's guilty in, within that family. I don't know how much this uh, corruption and, uh, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm looking for a good word, but I don't know how, how far and deep this runs, you know? Um, but at, at the end of the day, um, I'm more concerned about all the victims that convict Murdoch has victimized, like the people who he took money from and his business partners who he stole money from and all of the people who were questionably found dead that were around him and his family. Um, that's what this reporter was looking uh, to go. He was looking for answers like, hey, what about... Um, you know, all the people who came up, uh, who, who's come up dead around the Murdoch family. And he, in political fashion, sidestepped it all and turned it into, you know, that this family also is a victim too, if there is anybody innocent within that family. State of South Carolina. But at the end of the day, people were brutally, savagely murdered that night. A, a wife and a son were, were murdered by someone that they loved and someone that they trusted. Um, and that same individual hurt a lot of other people in that community. And I know that people want to keep talking about it and they want to, you know, they, they want to talk about the movies and the docu-series and all the things that are no, coming out. No, we want out, the truth. But we lives want were the destroyed. Truth. 
a community was upended. And you know, I, don't, I don't know about you guys. I don't, I don't give a flying f about the about the movies and the documentaries. I care about the truth. That's that's what we want, and that's what you expect from the attorney general's office. You expect them to get to the bottom of any corruption or any um, favoritism that was shown to this evil monster that we see here on the screen. This is a person who's not only uh, convicted of murdering his son, blowing his son's head off, and killing his wife while she's on all fours and shooting her with an AR-15, but he's f***ed up so many people's lives along the way. As many as we don't even know. It could This thing could run far and deep. Look at, we're, we're, this conversation is about Stephen Smith. I could just continue and go on probably for hours talking about, you know, his, uh, forget it. I mean, th th this to me is just pathetic 101. Uh, I'm just going to put it back just for a second. Um, and that same individual hurt a lot of other people in that community. And I know that people want to keep talking about it and they want to, you know, they, they want to talk about the movies and the docu-series and all the things that are coming out. But lives were destroyed. A community was upended and get to you know, the bottom we can talk of it. about it in a kind of a cavalier way. And I know people do this coffee shop talk. I get that. But at the end of the day, real lives are destroyed. And I don't want to I don't want to add to that. I don't want to feed that. Um, I want to I want to show that family the level of respect that they deserve, uh, as I would show to any victim of any crime. It doesn't matter what. Are you interested in outing the good old boys and the people who look the other way and let the Murdoch family run around the hospital? When there was a boating accident, uh, a, a, a boating crime that happened. I don't even call that an accident. That was a crime. Driving a boat, operating a boat while intoxicated and letting the Murtaugh's run around that uh, hospital trying to intimidate people who were there and talk to people and say, oh, weren't you driving this boat? Not my son. And that's a, that in my eyes is, is a crime in itself. And that's some of the things that I would be saying, hey, Look into this. Look into all this shady sh Anyways. Side of the courtroom they were sit seated on. At the end of the day, two members of that family were brutally murdered. And we have to recognize. You had tweeted out saying, we're not finished. Yeah. What does that mean? Well, a number of questions I've gotten is, what next as it relates to the Murdoch case? It's like people don't want this to end uh, for whatever reason. But obviously there were 99 charges, financial crime charges, because, I mean, he, he's he been done, doing a lot of bad things for a long period of time that through the course of our investigation, not just involving the murder, but involving the trust that people place in him and how he lied and manipulated to so many other people. Mm -hmm. So my position on that is everyone that he stole from and everyone that he lied to and that was harmed by his actions, they deserve their day in court too. So we're going to pursue those charges to their logical end. Um, and hold him accountable, regardless of whether he's in prison for life or not. Um, people deserve to have their day in court, and we're going to give those victims an opportunity to be heard in court as well. Um, obviously, there's an appellate process. Um, you know, his attorneys have signaled, and, and this is part of our system of justice. You know, when you are convicted, you have a right to uh, file various appeals, and those can go as far as the court will allow them to. This office is charged with defending the, the appeals of Alec Murdoch, and we're going to defend them all the way to the Supreme Court if necessary. In pursuing these financial crime charges, we watched Alec Murdoch sit on the stand and admit to a lot of them. Can you just pull up that video and say, here he is on the stand admitting to it? Here he is on the stand admitting to it? We, we are certainly uh, aware of what he said on the stand, and obviously we're going to use... That's, he's under oath. Yes, they can 100% use that. Um, and I'm not even an attorney. Um, listen, I got sidetracked here because um, this is a preview for tonight's show. And I just want to let you guys know, let me know what you think here in the comment section now in the live chat. Um, everybody requires and, 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 and is entitled to their day in court. And, and like he just said here, if there's 100 people or 99 people plus another 100 people, 200, whatever the case may be, if people now come forward and say, hey, I was a victim of this man, um, they should tr um, put every case before the court, no matter what his life sentences are, because he, you know, again, killed his wife. He's convicted of, conv ki convicted of killing his wife and his son uh, brutally and lying about it and lying about every piece of it, you know? 
Um, so tonight's live, I want you guys to send questions for our forensic pathologist in regards to Stephen Smith's first uh, autopsy report. Uh, I'm going to be showing page by page the report on the screen as Dr. Eason, um, the forensic pathologist who's going to join us, um, he's going to break down every every piece of the original autopsy. And, and, I, and I'm going to ask him some hypothetical questions. Listen, I don't call my experts and my wit, the, the folks who are experts in the field to ask them to um, go along with what everybody's saying. I want the truth of what their expert opinion is on what's put in front of them. And, you know, we may or may not get the, the answers that we're going to want to hear. Um, I didn't discuss with him beforehand what he thought about the reports. I just sent the reports to him and I asked him for his analysis on those reports. So if you guys can send questions in for Ed Wallace and myself, we'll be live tonight at eight o'clock with our forensic pathologist to talk about the Stephen Smith autopsy. And we're going to also talk about the, um, the second exam that's going to occur um, that is probably now in the process. If, in fact, his body was exhumed, as we are all talking about in the chat, and, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go check Eric's Twitter, Eric Bland's Twitter account to see if he tweeted about it. Um, but I, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to wait to see, um, you know, official notification from the attorneys who are representing Sandy Smith in this case. Um, I wanted to show you just a, a little bit of, a, this is Eric Bland's thoughts uh, from an investigative standpoint, about six or seven, maybe even a week or so. Yeah, about seven or eight days ago, actually. I'm just counting up the days. Eight days ago. Uh, Eric Bland uh, did an interview and he gave his thoughts um, to a news reporter locally. So I, I want to just play this for you guys. And to see Stephen Smith, who was 19 years old when he dies, is now being investigated as a homicide. This changes things from the original cause of death, which was listed as a hit and run. So we are eager to talk to Eric Bland, who is the Smith family attorney. Thank you so much for having me, Andrew. I appreciate it very much. My first question is that this case has been stalled for a very long time, Stephen dying July 8th of 2015. And now all of a sudden in the last couple of weeks, there has been so much activity, news now that uh, SLED is investigating this as a homicide. What has this been like for the Smith family to finally get things moving in this case? Uh, if not delayed, certainly stalled and slowed at different times. It's ebbed and flowed depending on what happened. It's never been the primary focus of an investigation. We were going to be dogged in our pursuit of finding out what happened to Stephen Smith. That's what we were retained to do. Find out what happened and how it happened. Because universally, Andrea, nobody believed that Stephen was the victim of a hit and run homicide on, by an automobile. It, it, the facts belie that there were, you know, his shoes weren't blown off, even though he had loosely tied shoes. There weren't skid marks. There wasn't debris left over by uh, a damage to an automobile. And, and the actual injuries that he suffered from don't indicate that it was caused by an automobile. Yet for eight years, that has been the conclusion of the state of South Carolina through a death certificate that was issued, as well as a coroner's report. I think. Chief Keel realized that this is the time. You know, every case has a time. Um, and maybe SLED didn't think it was the time to really pursue this um, between 2015 to 2023. But I believe now SLED does have that commitment. And I spoke to Chief Keel. It was a very surreal conversation, you know, to get a call and for the chief of SLED to tell you, this is the official position of the state of South Carolina. We believe that Stephen Smith was the victim of a manslaughter homicide. Now, can you imagine that, Andrea? That's, that's uh, eight years worth of contrary to what the state has been saying. All right, let me ask you this, because I know for many people that, you know, exhuming a body is not something we hear about every day. Uh, where are you in the process of that? Um, already um, retained 
Dr. Michelle Dupree, who is a, a credentialed, fully credentialed expert witness in pathology. She has exhumed many bodies in the past, and she is going to be the quarterback of our forensic team. We are in the process of also retaining a national expert who um, has exhumed bodies in the past and then does autopsies because essentially we're doing a, a second autopsy. And when you do this, it's, you know, there's a lot of factors. We don't know the condition of Stephen's body. We don't know how it was prepared. We know that there uh, was uh, a certain casket and a crypt, but we don't know environmentally what has happened. Has ground caused it to collapse? Has water infiltrated? So that's why you need people that have done this before. Many people do auto um, autopsies a day after somebody died, but it's a completely different kettle of fish when you're doing it with somebody that's been buried for eight years. So we, we are retaining the, those experts. We have to get a funeral home to join in our request. It's done by a funeral director. And then we then take that if there's any objection to court to get a court order that will authorize the exhumation of the body. Because Andrew, as you can imagine, people who have died have rights. Nobody, we just can't have people going to cemeteries all around our state and digging up bodies because they may question how that person died or. Well, you make some great points here. And I, I got to say the poll that we made uh, here, I didn't see one number one. Um, again, I am not an expert in how an autopsy is supposed to be conducted and what's supposed to be done. So these are some of the questions I'm going to ask our forensic pathologist tonight, because he has um, read the report and he is going to give us his professional uh, take on it. Now, um, you know, the family is, they have a, an awesome team assembled and I, I want to, I want to play for you um, quickly. Um, this, I mean, listen, the, the attorney, uh, they have like Michelle Dupree, forensic pathologist and forensic anthropologist is on the team. And Kenny Kinsley, uh, we saw him on uh, the Murdoch trial and he was a key witness for the uh, crime scene investigation. So I'm going to um, play a little piece for you guys. Uh, I'm going to play this tonight too. Um, but Court TV did a, a, a piece on it, and also um, I, I'll play the Court TV because this one is this is pretty good, but it's actually pretty long. Um, but they walk out there with Kenny Kinsley. Uh, for those of you who are in the chat, let me know if you saw this already. Uh, but this I thought was pretty interesting to get a walk right direct into the um, into the crime Very scene. latest, let's take you out to Hampton County, South Carolina right now, where we find Court TV legal correspondent Shanley Painter, who has a closer look at the stretch of roadway where Stephen Smith's body was found, and she has with her a special guest. Hey, good morning, Julie. I returned to the scene where Stephen Smith's body was found in 2015, and I spent about an hour with crime scene expert Dr. Kenny Kenzie. You may remember him as the star witness of the Alec Murdoch double murder trial. Shoots Paul in the back of the head like this, and where does the blood spatter go? The blood spatter, the pellet defects, and one that I didn't know about that the expert collected was in the door frame at the top of the door. Dr. Kinsey, one of the things that you said stuck out to you in the investigation report, the lack of physical evidence here at the scene. Talk to me about that. Well, typically, Ms. Chanley, you're going to have car parts, plastic, glass, you know, those lenses, they, uh, they don't hold up to a lot of impact. And the ones that I have worked that were intentional and also the ones I've assisted Highway Patrol with, I, I believe there's always been debris. Dr. Kinsey, you've marked the spot where uh, we believe Stephen Smith's body was found. Now, on, on him, in his front pocket, Dr. Kinsey, his phone, undamaged, and car keys. His shoes down here still on his feet, loosely tied. Uh, the damage, according to the reports, to the, the head area 
only is what they observed here at the scene. It doesn't take a lot of force to break a cell phone. I do it all the time. And I can't imagine that uh, Mr. Smith was struck. And with the friction of the highway, it's unforgiving. It, it's hard to explain how that phone wouldn't be damaged. Uh, the shoes, like I said, I've never been a trooper. I've assisted on a number of them. And everything that was said earlier about the shoes, I believe the shoes are at least one of them is usually ejected. Right. Uh, the lack of damage to the clothing, and that's that's what I have done. And I look at the clothing, and I don't see a lot of defects in the clothing that is caused from contact with the pavement. And the positioning on the middle line, I mean, at bare minimum, I don't think a person could mistakenly hit someone and not know they hit someone. No sled is investigating this as a homicide. And so, you know, let's say um, they return here to the scene. What are some things they're going to be looking for here? Show show me what, what they'd be looking they're for. Gonna, they're going to probably come back just like we talked this morning. If they haven't already, I don't want to speak for so they sure. because I, I know all those. I want to just say something. Okay, so. Uh, I'll, I'll go back to the video. Um, let me just put the video on and just put me a small screen here. Uh, I want to say something. What we're hearing from all the news reports is, you know, the shoes aren't off the feet, um, you know, no car parts, no um, glass, no um, debris. Now, I, I've been, you know, as a patrol officer, I, I, I've been to many scenes where people have been hit by cars and many scenes where people survived and many scenes where people did not survive. And I remember one in particular. Um, it was on Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn and uh, a person stepped out in front of a van uh, that was being driven down to uh, Central Booking. Uh, it was a police van, so it was a big transport van, uh, and he stepped out in front of it, um, and he, his remains were, and he was hit full speed uh, by a van, and the, his remains were scattered uh, across a good tenth of a mile or more, um, maybe even a quarter of a mile. There was uh, pieces of this guy, um, and it was horrible, um, but that was a direct hit. So we don't know. Um, it, it, I want to know from a forensic pathologist standpoint what the body of Stephen Smith presented at autopsy to indicate and have them classify, have her, the pathologist, classify it as a, a hit and run. That's I want answers to that. I have not heard anybody go into his um, injuries and detail it and break it down. Now, that might be out there somewhere, but I i haven't seen or heard anybody speak about that. Um, the actual details of his injuries. Yes, gaping um, uh, gash on the front left, I think, side of his scalp, uh, of his head, forehead, um, and, and some other injuries. But I, I really want to hear what the doctor has to say tonight in regards to um, how and why a forensic pathologist would come to a conclusion that this young man was a victim of a hit and run accident. And, that, and that's, that's really what the show is going to be about. Um, and I'm hoping that all of you will join us tonight to hear because I, I'm every time I have somebody like this on, I always learn something and we'll ask the tough questions. We'll ask the questions back and forth, you know? Um, so let's see what, um, Let's see what Dr. Kenny uh, Kinsey is doing with the measurements here. This kind of reminds me of Ed Wallace with the crime scene, like with, with his taping and copious notes and measurements and so forth that he talks about. Those men and women. Um, they return here to the scene. What are some things they're going to be looking for here? Show show me what, what they'd be looking they're for. Gonna, they're going to probably come back just like we talked this morning. If they haven't already, I don't want to speak for so they edge because I, I know all those men and women. And they're going to come back. They're going to do their own measurements and they're going to find their own characteristics in, in the horizon and their own features. And they're going to map this thing every inch of it. That's pretty good. We're we're close. Look at here. That's thirty two, and it's thirty two foot off that hole. So his feet would have been. His feet would have been in. 
this area and then his head in that direction. Dr. Kinsey, there's a lot of unanswered questions about this scene. Things that maybe the new investigation will reveal. Maybe some of those answers will come to light, but there's some things that maybe we just will never know about what really happened here, right? Yeah, Chanley, that, if you knew 100%, it would always be perfect. And evidence degrades over time, memories fade. Uh, and evidence can disappear over time. He, he was being nice in that interview, but that's the truth. And he really, he says it in a different way. Memories fade, evidence degrades, but I would have added a third component to that is evidence disappears. Things are missed, but I believe the key here is someone knows. Reveal, maybe some of those answers will come to light, but there's some things that maybe we just will never know about what really happened here, right? Yes, Chanley, that, if you knew 100%, it would always be perfect. And evidence degrades over time, memories fade, uh, things are missed. But I believe the key here is someone knows. Someone knows because people can't be quiet and somebody knows and they're scared to come forward for whatever reason. But somebody knows and, and the Smith family deserves answers. And Julie. Don and I agree. Um, I got, I'm got. i going to play that again tonight, but this is just a preview for tonight's show. Um, so just so you guys know, if you're um, if you're if you're subscribed to this channel, um, you will be now sent over to tonight's live stream it's already set up um once i end this it'll bring you over once the whole thing ends it'll bring you over to tonight's show just give it a thumbs up and if you can give this video a thumbs up share it out onto your social media platform uh set the notification bell on the um, video for tonight when you get sent over there you can maybe put a comment in there but i encourage you guys to send questions on dutyron.com so the questions for tonight's show just put in the subject line questions for forensic pathologists or just put forensic put you know questions for pathologists or questions for the doctor and then I'll know exactly what they are but I'm going to just be fielding questions as it relates to the first autopsy the first autopsy that was conducted in 2015 on Stephen Smith and also the second that is going to be either conducted the, in the weeks coming here and we, again, I, I wasn't able to get confirmation on his body being exhumed, but I'm assuming that they're going to do it as soon as possible. And like I said, I think about a bunch of you people in the chat have been saying that, yes, it, it has been exhumed. I'm going to go over to Eric Bland's Twitter and check that out. Uh, and then tonight, if, if I see a statement on from the attorneys, either Ronnie Richter or Eric, um, then I'll go with that. But again, like I said, just let's keep it related to questions for the pathologist and you know he is not going to have the knowledge of um everything that took place in the time after the uh, the 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 autopsy was completed in 20 um 2015 he's not going to know what exchange, exchange of information that went back and forth from the investigators with the pathologist I know that there's a whole conversation about that. I'm not going to put him in that position, but I want to know for us, for our own knowledge base, what the report indicates as it pertains to Stephen Smith's uh, body as it was presented before the forensic pathologist. All right, guys. So thank you for the super chat, Southwest 4x4 Explorer. You sent in a super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you to everyone who gives this a thumbs up, who shares it out on their social media, that puts it out onto any of the platforms that are groups that are talking about this. Uh, we'll see you tonight, 8 p.m. Eastern, Dr. Eric Eason, forensic pathologist, and our great friend Ed Wallace is back home from an overseas, another overseas trip, but he's going to be joining us. We're going to talk a little bit with Ed about crime scene preservation and how challenging eight years later it is to go back and look at Stephen Smith's car. We know that his mom uh, has the vehicle in her possession. Was that vehicle left outside in the elements? Is it in a, a safe, secure place where it's not getting degraded? Um, these are all questions that we'll ask Ed tonight. He's going to be here with us. We'll have a whole bunch of 
a Q&A at the end of the live stream. So hang around to the very end of the live. We'll have a Q&A with Ed Wallace and um, Dr. Um, Eric Eason, the forensic pathologist. So I'll see you guys tonight, 8 p.m. on the East Coast. Love and respect from Crime Time with Duty Ron. And as I always like to end these, God bless the world, God bless the United States of America, and God bless each and every one of us here in the chat. But especially Stephen Smith, his mom, Sandy, his sister, and the extended family. We send them strength, prayers, and positive vibes. And to all who have suffered, um, a, we had some really, really severe weather and tornadoes across the United States over the last day and a half. Um, but we've been having a really bad go with Mother Nature here in the United States. So sending prayers and strength to all affected by the tornadoes, strong weather, the flooding, um, and everything that's happening across the slate here. My heart breaks for everybody that's affected by this. All right, guys, we'll see you tonight at 8. Peace.